Okay, right. Now everybody knows about Transformers that studied them and worked with them. And, um, I use a pencil actually because I don't know if it's going to show up too well. But um, we have our basic coil. Right. Um, as everyone knows. And then you have your uh, laminations, standard laminations. And we have our center core. Right, okay. And now when you energize the coil um, and you stick a piece of metal on here or a nail or something, let's just symbolically use a nail or something. Russ actually was talking about this a few months, was it, or maybe last year. But anyway, you have um, a nail attached to the end, and now when it's energized, then that nail will stay stuck to the um, laminations indefinitely until that nail is pulled away from the inductor, or the inductance is discharged and used by another coil somewhere <clears throat> right okay right we've got that bit out of the way now what I'm trying to explain here is that we're actually utilizing that effect in the um, designs that I've made for my um, concentric bubbleator uh, and uh, it's gonna. It would be very, very messy for me to draw all the laminations on this piece of paper. It would be very, very confusing. So instead, I'm going to simplify it. Um, the actual what I've just been showing you here, this effect here, is representative of this circle, right? Now. The, uh, the the bubbleator actually works like this because the you have the actuator coil, which basically is a closed loop system, and it draws on the magnetic ma static magnets which are over in in over here, right, and it engages those static magnets into this loop, right so that it actually traps that field in that loop and it also frees up the magnets along the other side into another loop right and we also have a third loop which is another actuator on the other side and I've, over, I've just drawn all the transformer now which is getting messy so that would be B um, therefore what we're doing is we're we have a balanced system so this magnetic field would be it, it doesn't care if it's actually been um, in this direction and engaged with these magnets here or if they're actually pulled into this loop and actually uh, we have a magnetic um, circuit going around maybe I should draw this again see if it's getting kind of messy. Uh, so what we have is it inter an interlaced system. We have basically overlapping um, interlaced cir magnetic circuits. This is simplified, don't forget. <coughs> So we have uh, either we have um, A actuated coil turned on or we have B actuated coil turned on. Whichever coil is engaged depends will, will affect the polarity of the um, secondary coil which is in the middle. So whether the outside is north and the ins and outside is north, inside is south, or if the other actuation coil was engaged then the outside would be south 
and the inside will be north. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to draw that because it gets too messy. But we have basically um, three closed loops overlapping. So that is bit the basic simplified way it works. Because when we engage this this magnetic circuit where the magnetism is in a complete circle <coughs> it's actually uh, the magnets that are actually on here um, which is north and south actually want to travel around this loop to return to the other magnet on the other side because if they don't do that then they will be flipped and going around on the um, they'll be cancelled out because the field will actually effectively be short circuited straight to the other magnet next to it okay right so anyway <laughs> and it's getting messy again <laughs> so anyway I think you get the simplified version of how this actually works and why we should have a substantial gain because the um, the circuit wants to be um, in one of three states or one of two states really actually uh, it either wants to be travelling around this this magnetic loop or it wants to be directly cancelling itself out and um, obviously when it's going around this loop the magnets on the other side will be travelling around this loop and the same for the other side so we have an al alternative um, oscillation going on whereas the central one is always engaged but with opposing or like-minded poles it's either north south or north south or uh, north south it's alternating in the, the, the secondary coil and but during that process we have um, A, B or A, B switching alternatively and because the poles are, are, are far apart on these ends we don't have any back uh, EM, EMF electromagnetic field from cancelling out because uh, there's a huge gap between them and the, the actual laminations are interlaced it by interlacing, um, let's say this the set. This is a centre one. Um, this is the. Um, I'll do a bo box. Actually, this is the centre coil. And this is the an, an actuation coil. A. And this is an actuation coil of B. So what we have is a, an interlacing of, um, this is simplified again, of uh, a lamination coming in from this side, a lamination coming in from this side, and so they're actually like two fingers overlapping like this, but each system is closed so that this one returns to the centre core and returns back to the B. This one comes in interlaced and is read to the centre core comes back to the A. So we have basically like two hairpins, two hairpins, bends of coupling between both sides to the centre generator coil. So that's the way the simplified version works. Anyway, I thought I'd explain that. So I just think about two hairpins which is like this and they're overlapping and uh, each one is a closed system so uh, these are the cores center and outside uh, center and outside and they're actually overlap and the center one is what generates the power right so we have a swing of um, polarization between the left and the right and the left and the right but the centre core is having a complete pole shift whereas the outside ones are only seeing a half pole shift <coughs> right 
Okay, I think that went pretty well, considering the uh, live stream's not working. <sighs> Thanks for watching.